Good morning, you strange and wonderful weirdos. I'm John. I'm Stacy. It's Monday, November the 7th, and here's why today is strange. All right, so let's start off with the gigantic telescope in Chile. That's a big Sorry, telescope. Did I, <laughs> did I startle you with well, that? Well, it was your giganticism. <laughs> the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, the observatory in Chile. Bless you. Yes. Uh, it's been hit by a cyber attack. Oh, that no. That has taken its website offline and forced it to suspend all observations. Huh. Isn't that very strange? Now, this particular telescope is one of the most powerful and advanced radio telescopes in the world. It makes tons of observations, and they have no idea why somebody would hack it. Now, they claim that the uh, arsenal of 66 high-precision antennas, uh, they were not compromised. There was no scientific data that the instruments collected. None of that was stolen or compromised. Um, There's no demands or reason given for the attack just that they are not able to observe anything for the foreseeable future they can't even give you a date for when they're going to have it back online their entire website is gone were they looking at anything it did not say it did not say i thought that was very strange because they have no idea who the hackers are they don't know how they conducted the attack and or what any of the motivations are so if a meat packing plant went down Mm -hmm. i would assume that a group of, you know, activists right. had taken it down. Right. Not a lot of astronomy activists out there. No, this is true. They weren't doing a lot of harmful things to the environment or anything. They're just looking into space. Doesn't really hurt. I mean, we don't use like a certain kind of uh, animal to look through his anus and see the sky. You I know? mean, we don't know how it works. Well. But I'm assuming that that's not the way. It'd be interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> So it's very distressing development, ah. and <laughs> uh, just very Killed strange. Tilt his head a little to the left. Mm-hmm. There's Uranus. <laughs> so I think in the follow-up tweet to the attack, they said it is not yet possible to estimate a date for a return to regular activities. So that was only the first part of my my thesis there. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. I Continue. was making a point. I'm sorry. I thought your point was that you found Uranus through the cow's anus. Because you don't pay attention, Stacey. I'm You're so not a very sorry. good student. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Continue. I was saying, if that was to happen at a meat packing plant, right, right, you would right, think right. it was activist. Right. Okay? Maybe. Maybe. Or you would think that cows gained a higher level of sentience and, and took it over and, you know, shut it down. Right. More than likely the first one. Mm-hmm. Just saying, for the record, more than likely the more first one, likely. not ruling out the other one. I mean, cows are mysterious creatures. Not ruling it out. But with the in- instrument array here, with a telescope, with, you know, looking at planets, looking at schmanets, looking at Janet, there's a little part of me, mm-hmm. just a wee itty bitty little itty bitty part mm-hmm. that thinks a little succulosi on it, <laughs> you know? Right, right. Like there's something up there that doesn't want to be seen. Right. So and we're the- talking about chili. We're talking about... UFO. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean... Tons of UFOs there. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that I... Other than the fact that, yes, Chile has a high number of UFO sightings. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you were out there, you would imagine that maybe something new they were looking or mm-hmm. they seen something and mm-hmm. the proverbial uh, alien lady in the shower through the window, ha, ah, you know. Or even if it, you know, even if you don't want to go with the whole... It's aliens theory. Maybe there's just someone on Earth that knows about something that's could be seen. Oh yeah, and doesn't want it to be seen. Them. Yes. It's they them. did it. They did it. They do a lot. They do. They do. Continue. Let's move on and let's talk about a Wisconsin hospice nurse who is being charged with felony abuse after amputating a patient's foot without any orders to do so. Yes. So this is about Mary Kay Brown. She is a former hospice nurse who was responsible for taking care of an elderly gentleman at the Spring Valley Health and Rehab Center in Spring Valley, Wisconsin. And she has recently been charged with physical abuse of an elder person, intentionally causing great bodily harm and mayhem, 
uh, according to the criminal complaint. Now, that's terrible. The patient was brought in to the center because he had severe frostbite on both of his feet, and he was admitted back in like March. Um, now he, they believe that he was getting close to the end of his time, somewhere towards the end of May. So at the end of May, the nurse decided that she was going to amputate his right foot. Now, it was only being held on by some skin and a few tendons oh. because he had severe frostbite. And she claims that she did it to make him more comfortable. However, um, another nurse who witnessed the am- amputation told them that the patient gripped her hand tight felt everything, like moaned during the procedure. She had no authority to do it. No doctor told her to. The patient didn't ask her to. Um, She just took it upon herself. And after it was over, when the nurse spoke with the patient, the patient told her that it hurt and he could feel everything. Um, And then according to a local news outlet, another nurse told the police that the amputation was done poorly and that the Mary Brown, the nurse that did it, Uh, mentioned in passing that her family had a taxidermy shop where she said she intended to preserve the foot and put it on display with a sign that reads, wear your boots, kids. Isn't that awful? The whole thing is awful. Listen, I've had a lot of things on here that I've sometimes put over and said that I'm speechless, but that was one of the most horrific stories I've ever heard. You know, there's parts of it where I'm like, um, they should have probably had that amputated by a medical professional. Probably. It sounded horrible to start with, and I bet there was an incredible smell and aroma that was attached to it. I can't believe it was just hanging on by so yeah. little. Just, so uh, there, there was already lack of care. Right, okay? right. Maybe not. Maybe not according to a professional. We are not professionals, and we did not right. stay in a Holiday Inn Express last And time. we didn't see it. There's no pictures. No, no. Thank, no. Thank God. <laughs> But that's horrific. It, it is. It really is. And it get, it just gets worse with the taxidermy part. Right. Like, that's the strangest part of the story. Like, why would she say that? Yeah, I don't know. Or even, I don't know. I, I don't know. So crazy. That is just, I'm. you know, there's a lot of foot jokes. There's a whole lot of sticking your Lots toes. Lots of foot humor. Oh, yeah, a lot of sticking your toes in footsie top jokes, but not going to go there. That's horrible. I feel really bad for that patient Mm. all right so let's move on Uh uh-huh let's talk about the blood moon lunar eclipse that is going to happen tomorrow people that's right kids be ready on election day on election day little lunary little full moony little red so on the morning of November 8th, there's going to be a, an eclipse. It is possible that you may see it. There is a website you can go to, moon.nasa.gov. It'll give you the exact times of when you can see it in your area. And if you happen to see it, it's going to be the last one that you will get to see for almost three years. The next one will not be until March 14th, 2025. Yeah. There's, you know, from what I hear that, Uh, full blood moon eclipses can cause like malfunctions in Mm -hmm. counting Mm -hmm. equipment right right it could i mean i've heard that too and now (laughs) you can see it in the early morning hours so make sure you check the website i will be (laughs) i guarantee you i will be awake i'm sure that you will so well. it, it's in a lot of weird stuff around it that. It does say that, you know, while the moon will dim to like the dull red color, why it's called a blood moon, that viewers with binoculars will be able to see Uranus just a finger's width away from the eclipsed moon. So it's going to be very close. You're just trying me, aren't you? I mean, right. you're just lobbing up softballs. I'm trying. You going to hit one? No. No? <laughs> all right, all right. Let's try this next one. Oh, here's a good one for you. I like Ready? finding the beauty that's not, <laughs> not obvious. associated with your aims. Not obvious. Okay. All right, so let's move on to this next story. Got to have a brown eye for these things. <laughs> this is another story from Chile. And this is about a reporter, a journalist named Nicholas Crum. And he was on the ground in Chile. Obviously, he was out and about reporting. And he was doing a report on a recent robbery. Okay. And while he was doing his report on camera, a parrot came and landed on his shoulder. It was very cute. And he just continued doing his report. And he was kind of pointing to it. And then the bird stole his AirPod out of his ear and flew away. 
while he was doing a report on Did robbery. Did it to the uh, shoulder of a one-legged <laughs> man that was uh, captaining a ship? No. No, it wasn't, uh, wasn't a pirate parrot. But during this time, a group of pirate monkeys robbed the local bank. Possibly. That's interesting. It was just really funny that he was doing a story on a robbery, and then he was robbed by a bird. A parrot. They did find the AirPod later. It it dropped it. Like, the bird flew away. You could see, like, the producer running after... (laughs) Running after the bird. He did keep his cool. He finished his story. And it's because the bird um, uses uh, Google devices. But then the bird dropped the AirPod and uh, remains at large. They have not caught the bird. I'm sure he... Uh... <laughs> I'm no, not, nothing? Nothing. All right, all right. I'm going to get you with this last one. Okay. All right. All right. Ready? Okay, so the National Park Service wants humans to stop licking this particular toad. And they have started putting up warnings about it. It has gone up with their, you know, their normal warnings of don't feed the animals and, you know, don't tease the bears or whatever. Now there is going to be a warning that says, please refrain from licking any of the animals. (laughs) What kind of toad is it? So this is a Sonoran desert toad, also known as a Colorado River Toad. It's about seven inches in size and carries a weak, low-pitched rivet sound. Like, they definitely detailed out what this toad looks like, the one they don't want you to lick. Uh, They say that they secrete a potent toxin that can make people sick if they touch it or get the poison in their mouth. However, (laughs) if you get just a little bit, it contains a powerful hallucinogenic known as 5-M-E-O-D-M-T. Or also known as instant grateful dead fan right so in recent years smoking the amphibian secretions has grown in popularity which is gross by the way it's a little known jim morrison uh, song so much. smoking the amphibians secretions <laughs> secretions <laughs> so much that it's considered threatened in at least new mexico due to collectors that want to use the animal for drug use but now they have the signs up because it's considered a schedule one drug this frog toxin so then you have to deal with the freaking prints you were not advised He's very to, go in to, to go to the park. Like, why are you licking me? And it's licking the toads. <laughs> you know, I never wanted to lick a toad, but I kind of want to now. Do you ever what... kiss a frog? No. Never you, you never tried just to see if a prince would pop out? No, I, I don't think I could touch a frog or a toad for that matter. See? Mm. I just think it's funny because now that they put these warnings up, how many people are going to try to lick the toads? Because they're like, oh, you mean I can get high and you know, hallucinate if I lick that toad. I bet you I'm it was. Gonna catch one. I bet you it was a hyper lonely freaking uh, toad rider that put the story <laughs> out. Because he wants people to like. Or she. <laughs> you know, there was a story um, last year about dolphins. They were making this documentary on dolphins, and they actually filmed the dolphins um, chewing on this certain particular puffer fish that's poisonous. And they would like take a little, like they would agitate it, like bite it and agitate it until they got a little bit of the toxin. And then they'd pass it to the next dolphin. And then the dolphins would go into this weird trance. Like they would get high. They have this on video now. Like they were literally passing the puffer fish around and getting like high off of the toxin. Yeah, dolphins are freaking, that, that goes to our conversation from last week. Yeah, I mean, you chew a few puffer fish and you I end think up it's swimming the highest, next to a dead body. I think that's the <laughs> highest sign of intelligence. You know, they've got like... Do they make tools? Do they form war parties? I think, do they, you know, diddle fish to get high? <laughs> That's probably top of the evolutionary chain, wouldn't you think? I think so. I think so. Fish diddling has to be up there. Possibly. And with fish diddlers, we now know why today is strange. <laughs>